scientists can explain almost everything, but there are discoveries that leave them speechless. Objects, structures, and secrets from the past that challenge everything we think we know about human history. What you're about to see still baffles archaeologists and confuses science itself. We tend to believe that the science of developing prosthetic limbs is a relatively recent one, but history shows us that isn't correct. Here we see a prosthetic wooden toe affixed to the foot of an Egyptian mummy. The individual wearing the toe passed away 3,000 years ago. Experts have studied the toe extensively and reached the conclusion that it was amended and refitted several times, presumably in an attempt to make it more comfortable for its female owner. The discovery was made in the tomb of a priest's daughter, which means you didn't have to be male or socially significant in your own right to obtain such advanced medical treatment. The artisan who made this clearly knew a thing or two about human anatomy and physiology. We can tell that not only from the finely crafted toe, but also the belt strap that holds it to the foot. This artifact was made during the Iron Age and was found in a tomb on a graveyard sitting on the hill of Sikalkorna, not far from Luxor and the Valley of the Kings. It's the oldest prosthetic limb ever found and raises questions about how much more advanced ancient doctors were than we generally give them credit for. In 1891, American geologist Dr. Barber was summoned to investigate a series of strange spiral-shaped rock structures in Nebraska, USA. He spent years studying them but couldn't fully explain them, and we're still struggling to do so today. The bizarre shapes are full of sand, and the white material that makes up their wall is unidentified. To give things a sinister twist, Barber found dead rodents at the bottom of almost every single one of them. He gave them the name Demonolix, based on a nickname that had already been given to them by local ranchers, Devil's Corkscrews. The current working theory is that these shapes were made by creatures known as Palachysters, a species that became extinct 20 million years ago, but is thought to have been similar to the modern-day beaver. The creature might have dug out the spirals as a type of burrow, filled them with sand to stay warm, and took rodents in there with them to eat. That sounds pretty far-fetched, but it's the best idea we have at the moment. Our next mystery revolves around the fact that one of two hard-to-process facts must be true. Either the legendary terracotta army of ancient China is an elaborate fake, or the ancient Chinese knew about electrolytic chromium plating long before the rest of the world did. The official story of the terracotta army is that the clay soldiers are 2,200 years old and were buried to protect Emperor Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor in the afterlife. Western scientists and historians weren't allowed to study any of the clay soldiers in person until 2007, when a team of German experts was allowed access. The analysis of the Germans was that the statues were no more than a few decades old at most. The weapons that the soldiers hold in their hands are covered with chromium plating, of a kind that wasn't invented in Europe until the 1920s. Either someone in China knew how to go about the process over 2,000 years before anyone else in the world did, or the 8,000 clay soldiers that make up the army are nothing more than Chinese propaganda. We wouldn't like to say which one is more likely to be the reality. There's an episode of the popular BBC science fiction show Doctor Who entitled Vampires of Venice, but few people who've seen that story will have realized that the story might have been rooted in truth. It appears the people who lived in Venice during the 16th century were very afraid of vampires, so much so that they drove stakes through the skulls of anyone they suspected of being one. This gruesome discovery was made on the Venetian island of Lazaretto Nuovo in March 2009. As we can clearly see, a stake-shaped rock has been driven through the open mouth of the poor victim. Matteo Barini of the University of Florence says that this strange practice would have been seen as a way of ensuring that the deceased wouldn't come back from the dead, chew through their shroud, and resume their attacks on the living. It's believed that vampires, despite not existing, took the blame for the 1576 Venetian plague, which left 50,000 people dead in the city that year. A lack of knowledge about epidemiology and decomposition led to people looking for supernatural explanations for the spread of the plague and the grotesque appearance of the corpses in the city's mass graves, and vampires were apparently the most obvious answer. Mummification was the ancient Egyptian way of laying the deceased to eternal rest peacefully and with dignity. So why is it that a few mummies appear to have gone to the grave screaming? 
The world's best-known screaming mummy is Meritumen, a princess who appears to have spent the past few thousand years crying out in terror long after her death, her mouth wide open and her head tilted back. A CT scan of her remains has suggested she passed away because of a heart attack. That might explain why she appears to be in pain, but embalmers would normally correct this issue when going about the mummification process. Pentawir, the son of Ramses III, is also a notable screaming mummy. Pentawire died of hanging rather than cardiac arrest, so the heart attack theory appears to be out of the window. One possible explanation is that either Meritumum wasn't found until several hours after she passed, by which time rigor mortis had set in and her jaw had locked. Another possibility is that the bandages around her jaw weren't wrapped tightly enough, and so it fell open after she was interred. Neither explanation is entirely satisfactory though, and so the mystery continues. You might not think there's anything exciting about our next archaeological mystery when you first look at it. To all intents and purposes, it looks like a rusty old bolt, possibly a discarded piece of machinery. Here's the twist. This bolt is 300 million years old. How is that even remotely possible? The bolt was found in the summer of 1998 at a site in Russia by researchers hunting for meteorite fragments near Moscow. It's hard to disagree with the logics of their findings in this case. The rock is 300 million years old, and the bolt is so deeply embedded in the rock that the stone has grown around it. The only conclusion that can be reached is that the bolt is also 300 million years old. That would mean it existed not only before human life on our planet, but before the time of the dinosaurs. Amazingly, this find isn't unique. Examples of screws, bolts, gears, and cogs have been found embedded in equally ancient rocks all over the world. The official scientific explanation is that the shapes are actually crinoid fossils. But surely that can't be possible in every single case. There are two schools of thought about the true nature of the Koso artifact. One is that it's nothing more than an amusing geological curiosity that was created a little more than a century ago. The other is that it's evidence of complex tools being used on Earth half a million years ago, or perhaps even proof of time travel. We know it's probably easier to believe the first suggestion than the second, but bear with us. There's no doubt about what's at the core of the artifact. It's a spark plug manufactured by a company called Champion at some point during the 1920s. What makes it so baffling is that the iron oxide shell that's formed around it is half a million years old, and that age has been proven by laboratory testing. The artifact was found in 1961 in California by researchers out on the hunt for geodes. They didn't find any geodes that day, but this little mystery is arguably more significant than any geode they could ever find. It's physically impossible for the spark plug to have been shoved into the center of the rock after it formed. So how did it get there? Scientists have no idea. In fact, we suspect that they'd rather pretend it didn't exist at all. Grobbelman is one of the most visited and popular attractions in the Mosgard Museum in Denmark, and also one of the most grotesque. This 2,300-year-old corpse still has its own skin, hair, and fingernails. That can be chalked up to the fact that he spent almost all of that time buried in a peat bog, which has preserved him almost perfectly. The people who found him by accident while digging peat in 1952 didn't appreciate that near miracle, though. In fact, they took one look at him and ran away in fear. While there are several sets of human remains that have been pulled out of Denmark's numerous peat bogs over the years, Grobbelman is by far the most famous and the most exceptionally well-preserved. In fact, it appears the bog treated him better than his peers did. Physical evidence suggests that he's a human sacrifice victim. His shockingly red hair is believed to be a product of his many years in the bog. It's more likely that he was blonde than red-haired when he was first thrown into it. We're returning to China now where archaeologists found themselves puzzling over the so-called monster art on the wall of this perfectly preserved 1,400-year-old tomb in 2017. Things depicted on the murals include a naked humanoid, a horse with wings, and a strange monster that appears to be made of blue fire. The tomb is nothing like any other burial place of its era ever found, so there's no reference guide to refer to. The paintings and carvings elsewhere in the tomb are of villagers riding horses or working within their communities, so it's just this one wall that seems so out of place. The most educated experts from the Shangxi Provincial Institute of Archaeology were summoned to inspect the wall art, but they were left just as confused as everybody else. 
If we could decipher the images correctly, they might tell us who was buried in the tomb, but as we can't, we might never know. The images aren't necessarily a reference to the tomb's occupant, though. They could just as easily be a reference to an ancient Chinese mystical concept that we're unable to comprehend. Considering the fact that they ruled the land that's now known as Scotland for more than 1,200 years, it's alarming how little we know about the Picts. We don't even know how they referred to themselves. We get the term Picts from the ancient writings of the Romans, and it's thought to be a reference to the face paint they wore. The Picts had no written language and left behind very little in the way of buildings or monuments. So every time a trace of their civilization is found, it's always big news in the archaeological world. Here's one. It's a handprint left on a stone anvil by a Pictish metalsmith on the island of Rose roughly 1,500 years ago. The person who left this behind probably worked with copper and may even have lived in this cramped building surrounded by two anvils and a hearth. Imprints of the smith's knees and hands have also been found at the site. The smith's room is underground and would have been pitch black were it not for the hearth and the red-hot metal he worked with but the darkness might have been a deliberate choice to help him see and gauge the temperature of metal better. You might have heard of the town of Roswell in New Mexico, USA from the alleged UFO crash landing that happened there several decades ago. That's not the only strange thing to have happened in Roswell. There's also the matter of this strange stone, which a local resident found in September 2004. Someone has gone to the trouble of creating a very smooth, very elaborate pattern on the stone, and they've somehow managed to do it without leaving a single trace of whatever machinery or tool they used to make it, even under a microscope and subjected to multiple magnifications. There are no cuts or abrasions at the edge of the markings at all. It's as if they appeared on the stone naturally, which is obviously not the case. To add a further layer of intrigue, the stone is magnetic. Place a magnet next to one of the crescent moon shapes engraved on the surface, and it will spin in a clockwise direction. Place that same magnet next to the other crescent moon, and it spins the other way. Add that to the fact that the design on the surface is identical to one that turned up as a so-called crop circle in a field in England in 1996, and you're looking at a mystery for the ages. The history of ancient humans sailing and seafaring isn't anything like as well understood as we'd like it to be. We don't really know who the first people to make boats are or how far they might have sailed. We do, however, know that the Vikings made it as far as North America, and so almost anything is possible. Does that mean that Piri race made it to Antarctica? Perhaps so. The Piri race map, named after the Turkish admiral who either commissioned or drew it in 1513, contains far more detail than a person of that era should have known about. That includes the coastline of Antarctica, a continent that wasn't officially discovered for another 300 years. The representation of the coastline is too accurate for his drawing to be guesswork, so he must have seen it, even if he did so from afar. Oddly, he's drawn it without ice, so either Antarctica looked very different back then, or he was working from another reference map and mistranslated some details. Whatever the reason, it appears that the Turkish Navy had at least some knowledge of Antarctica long before other nations began laying claims to discovering it during the 19th century, and we have no idea how that could be possible using the wooden ships of the time. While we're on the topic of strange things turning up in ancient works of art, cast your eyes over these ancient Sumerian face reliefs. At first glance, they appear to be beautiful, but otherwise normal depictions of human beings working and hunting. But pay closer attention to their arms and their wrists. It looks for all the world like these ancient people are wearing modern-looking wristwatches. These aren't the only out-of-place objects that are said to be visible in ancient Sumerian works of art. Some people claim that there are spaceships in a few of the base reliefs. But the alleged spaceships don't look anything like as clear as these wristwatches do. You can even make out the markings on the faces. We know that the Sumerians had an advanced understanding of time 2,700 years ago. They had a calendar that was specific to their civilization, which, according to their creation myth, was given to them by the Anunnaki, who created all human life. We also know that they were considerably more advanced than many of their neighboring civilizations in terms of astronomy and medicine. Did their knowledge expand to clockwork and the manufacture of timepieces? Probably not. But we can't think what else these objects might be. Subscribe now and turn on the bell so you don't miss a thing. Fascinating discoveries await you in every video. Thanks for your support. See you soon.